I tried to warn you guys. I tried to warn you that there would be no Fed pivot. And that has been made exceptionally clear after Jackson Hole. In today's video, we're talking about how the pain will accelerate in the real estate market, how this crisis is about to get worse. And we're going to talk about how a recession is now all but guaranteed to happen. And we need to be exceptionally ready for this. We have entered a new era. The Jackson Hole speech has been game changing. And those who are ready will be able to capitalize on the reset. But you do need to do your homework. You do need to formulate your strategy. I'm going to give a refresh data update on the real estate market. We'll talk macro, we'll talk strategy, and we'll talk a little bit of market commentary. And then we'll discuss what we've been doing inside our community. Now, before we get started, make sure to follow me on Instagram. I talk about investment strategy, motivational content, and life perspectives. Recently on Instagram stories, I posted the following things. I showed some of the conversations that I had with my wonderful members inside my investment community. We have Jose here. He asked me in mid-August, and you would remember that in mid-August, stocks were at its local highs. Everyone was feeling very optimistic. S&P 500 was above 4,300. Jose asked me, what should he be doing inside his portfolio? And I said at that time that it's not safe right now really to allocate into SPY or QQQ. I said, if you want to take a little bit of risk, China, specifically Tencent or Alibaba, those levels at that moment in time offered a little bit of good risk reward. And another member, his name is Edmund, Edmund Chung. He asked me, and he's near retirement, what he should do with his portfolio. And I said, at this moment, also in mid-August, you must wait for a retracement. You must be careful. The markets are overbought. And based on this setup, the risk reward was quite poor. And because of his specific situation, I said, you really should position a little bit more conservatively. Berkshire Hathaway, J&J, Kroger, Procter & Gamble, that's a little bit safer compared to the S&P 500. That's what I said in mid-August. And also, guys, follow me on Twitter. This is my opinion on the economy after Jackson Hole. This is very serious. Before Jackson Hole, I was about 90% sure that we were going to enter a recession. After Jackson Hole, I'm 100% sure. And this won't be any ordinary recession. There won't be any soft landing and it won't be just a little bit of pain. So I need you to prepare yourself. I want you to understand that massive opportunities are coming up in the coming months and I will do whatever I can to help you capitalize on this. I helped our community reduce risk at those local highs just at S&P 500, 4,200, 4,300. And when the markets are ready to rebound, I will help everyone catch that as well. But I need you to be patient. I need you to have the patience of Buddha. Also, make sure to follow me on my email list. Link in the description below. I shared exclusive content in my recent email. I shared with everybody, out of goodwill, my bi-weekly August investment research report where you will see how we talked about risk reduction in the US was a very serious theme. So make sure to read that. If you're a serious investor, read every single word. I share this out of goodwill to our community. Of course, all the actionable strategy has already been used because that's reserved for members inside, but I wanted to share my research process with everyone. So make sure to check that out. Link in the description below. Now, today's video is about real estate, okay? And we're talking about how changes in the real estate industry are coming and they're coming immediately. A falling housing market is an omen for the stock market. Why? A lot of wonderful, good Americans have a lot of their net worth tied up in real estate. And when that part becomes illiquid, they might have to sell their assets in liquid markets like the stock market to fund those obligations. So be very careful here. Up until now, the past couple of years, the Fed has put the economy in ZERP mode. To explain, that means zero interest rate policies. And that's when a central bank sets its target short-term interest rate at or close to 0%. And in the past couple of years, because of this, Wall Street firms like Blackstone, they've taken advantage of that zero interest rate environment. And they have, through mergers and acquisitions, acquired companies like Home Partners of America. And they've snatched up more than 17,000 homes throughout the U.S., so if you've ever wondered why single family homes are so expensive, why they've gone up so much in the past couple of years, Wall Street is one of those reasons. They've influenced the 
inventory level in the supply and demand dynamic. Now, one month before Jackson Hole, Blackstone most likely already knew the Fed would stay hawkish. We can see here their opinion is that they see Fed funds rates near 5% and on a longer hiking cycle. And just before Jackson Hole, Blackstone announced that their single family landlord business would halt home purchases in 38 cities. This is significant because let's follow the logic here. Back in 2021, Blackstone acquired Home Partners of America and they own more than 17,000 homes. And throughout that time, they were rapidly building up their real estate portfolio. Now they are halting home purchases. What comes next? liquidation of their portfolios, offloading their real estate property, selling those properties. So that's something that we definitely want to pay attention to. The housing market is going through a shift. We can see here that the Redfin CEO, he says that this is a remarkably uncertain time because that deals under contract, they're being canceled at last minute notices. And sellers, they're taking their listings off the market because they hope for a turnaround so that they don't have to sell at these lower prices. Now, I'm going to share with you the latest data in the housing market. And in the charts that I'm about to show you, focus on the red line because that's the 2022 data. Before I do so, I want to give you some background, some context. We know that housing is essential in global economies. We know how important it is in China. Housing is also very important here in the US. In general, it could contribute up to 15, 18% of GDP, and that's through residential investment and consumption spending on housing services. Now let's take a look at some important data. And like I said, focus on the red line. This data is from Redfin. Price growth is moderating very quickly. So sellers that are trying to get out of the market, they're trying to do so as soon as possible because if this trajectory you can see here continues, eventually they're not going to get out at a favorable price. On top of this, mortgage payments, they're getting more expensive as rates rise. Now I know a lot of you, because you're very, very smart, you probably got into a 30 year fixed rate mortgage last year when it was at two, three percent. Well, now it's north of 5.5% and people, not everyone has a fixed rate mortgage. A lot of people have adjustable rate mortgages. And we can see that mortgage payments are getting more expensive as rates rise. And that's going to continue to be the case as the Fed tightens their monetary policy. And because of this, we're seeing the turnover rate. It's starting to slow down in the market. Homes sold now it's taking a median of 25 days. And while that's not alarming or anything like that, the number of days in the market that homes are expected to sell now is going to probably continue to take longer and longer and longer. And that means the market in real estate is becoming more illiquid. The number of homes sold at premiums from the list price is also falling. And if this trend continues, if you look at the red line, once again, sellers are probably not going to be able to exit at a favorable price. The number of listings with prices also is dropping. And this is important because for people who have been using real estate as an opportunity to invest as a second investment or as an alternative home to be able to sell at higher prices, well, these homes might potentially enter negative equity if they enter the market at the wrong time. And apartment prices, this is not residential real estate, this is not home prices, but apartment prices, the rental market. Look at the red line. Even though price growth is falling, that's the gray line, apartment prices are still very, very elevated. And because apartment prices, rent prices that make up such a big component of CPI, even though price growth is falling, the Fed is going to have to do a lot more to get apartment prices back into where it was just a couple of years ago. So a lot of pain could be in store. Now I want to share with you some interesting insights. Mega cap companies in the S&P 500, I've studied their earnings calls, and they have a split view on the economy, which is very interesting to me. There are two camps. One camp has publicly discussed that there's no recession in their earnings calls. And this list is Apple, Microsoft, Home Depot, Visa, 
American Express. This is just a sample list, it's not exhaustive. Another list has discussed how there's a macro slowdown or recession. We're talking Google, Facebook, Nvidia, Target, Walmart, Shopify, Netflix, Kroger. And because today's video is about real estate, I wanna dive in to Home Depot's earnings call transcripts. What kind of insights that I was able to find? I'm gonna do that in just a second, but before we do, I want to talk about today's sponsor, Moomoo, because they've got a new feature on their earnings calendar. And I want to walk you through that because now more than ever, any tools that will help you with fundamental analysis should absolutely be used. So Moomoo has a feature on their app that allows you to see the individual release dates of earnings reports. And I'm going to show you this on my phone here. You can tap on the calendar icon to add a reminder on your personal calendar. You can also tap on the filter button to filter by market type. And whether that's US markets, Hong Kong markets, or China markets, you can see all of it. And during a company's earnings call, you can even click on the live or video icon to watch the conference call. Moomoo also provides the earnings scripts and earnings highlights directly from the app so that you can read it straight from your phone. Now, I think that these tools are exceptionally valuable for fundamental oriented investors like myself. They allow you to keep track of the objective changes that are going through at a company and allow you to invest with deeper insights. So make sure to click the link in my description below to open up an account at Moomoo if you haven't yet already and claim your free stocks from Moomoo today so that you can get started on your investment journey when the price is right. All right, now let's get back to the content. So we're gonna talk about some insights from Home Depot's earnings. And yet despite everything that I just showed you, Home Depot's latest quarterly call claims no recession. I'm gonna show you this. I dug into their Q&A section of the earnings call. That's what I always like to do for you guys, my public friends, and also inside my investment community when I give actual guidance. And Home Depot, they told UBS, listen, there's no recession in macro housing, okay? Michael from UBS asked about, do you see any signs that housing is having a negative impact on the business? And from Home Depot, they say that we have not seen anything in our business yet from macro housing. Hmm. And I'm just going to say it in that tone. Hmm. From Citi, they asked Home Depot, are you concerned about home prices? And we can see here Home Depot says, it hasn't impacted us whatsoever. And that's once again a very interesting comment. We're gonna move on. Okay, also from City, on inventory, are you concerned about inventory? Is, is it at the right level in your business? Home Depot says it's low risk. Okay, fair. From Oppenheimer, one of the sell side investment firms, they asked about inflation. Are customers pushing back? Are they trading down? And Home Depot says, no trade down, none. There's no trade down at all. And from JPM, they ask Home Depot, well, would you say that the large pro client has been your best performer? And Home Depot says, yes, large pros were the best performers this quarter, and we're not going to break that out any further. Now, what does this mean, right? If you read in between the lines, it means that Home Depot's biggest customers, their biggest clients, they're doing just fine. But a lot of their retail customers, the customers like you and myself, they didn't talk about that very much. So if you read in between the lines, is the housing market actually that healthy based on what Home Depot says? I'm going to let you make that conclusion. I'm not going to conclude about this publicly. But Home Depot might change their tone in the next couple of quarters. And you know why? Because QT is coming. And this will change the complacent landscape that we're in. Believe it or not, with the S&P 500 at 4,000, a little bit underneath 4,000, the markets are still very complacent. And once QT ramps up, this may threaten market liquidity. And there was a special announcement from the Fed back in May. And that was that $95 billion of quantitative tightening is starting in September. So we're days away, we're weeks away 
from a $95 billion runoff program that's going to happen on the balance sheet. What's, what's that going to do? That's going to make interest rates go higher. That's going to make mortgage rates go higher. And we can see that since their announcement from May, the Fed's balance sheet really hasn't moved all that much. Yet the market has experienced incredible volatility. So I need you to imagine what the stock market volatility will be like if the Fed's balance sheet shrinks substantially from here, which is their plan. So the Jackson Hole speech, ladies and gentlemen, there was no confusion. It was very clear. There was a little bit of subtleness where Fed Chief Jay Powell says there might be some pain involved. I don't think it's going to be some pain involved. There's going to be a lot of pain involved. They talked about how there's going to be a period of below trend growth. If we translate that into plain English, that means the economy is going to slow down. And they're saying that a single month's improvement falls far short of what the committee needs to see. So if one single month's improvement falls far short, that means two months of improvement won't really move the needle as well. And even three months, that's the starting consideration behind the Fed thinking that inflation is going to be improved. So one month's data, two months data, it's not going to move the needle. They've made their commitment clear. The, the situation has changed. And the sell side is rushing to change their narratives immediately. And the buy side has already taken action, including us and hopefully including you. Increased hawkishness, it's coming at a fragile time for the tech industry, which is the biggest employer category in coastal cities with high housing values, which is keeping the housing market intact up until now. Now, a healthy job market, as you know, is the backbone of the housing market because without it, mortgage delinquencies, they're guaranteed to rise. But I need to show you something because when we look at the unemployment rate as it is here, Okay, it looks very, very healthy. But another way to view unemployment is via two metrics. The way we look at unemployment is through the U3 rate. That's what is released every single month, the U3 rate. But I also want to walk you through the U6 rate, the U6 unemployment rate, because that includes discouraged, underemployed, and unemployed workers. And why is that important? Because this covers a larger percentage of people who are unemployed because this considers discouraged and unemployed individuals as well. Now, based on the way unemployment is reported, U3, it looks very healthy. It looks like the economy is very, very strong. And that's quoted by the White House. It's quoted by general media narratives all the time. It's at basically all time lows. But if you look at the U6 unemployment rate, which captures underemployed folks and discouraged workers, that rate is not so low. That rate is near 7.2% and the trajectory doesn't look to be lower from here. It looks to have formed a bottom and from here we could potentially go much higher. So with mortgage rates north of 5.5%, that could make the degree of overvalued homes more sensitive to falling prices going forward. So this is a very sensitive time for the housing market. And I want all my friends here to understand this. It's no longer about what stock you pick. It is absolutely about your asset allocation. In other words, how much of your net worth do you have in cash? How much of your net worth do you have in stocks? How much of your net worth do you have in bonds? How much of your net worth do you have in real estate? It's about your asset allocation going forward. So now let me walk you through what we've been doing publicly. If you've been following my content, you know what we've been doing publicly. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, now is your opportunity to do so. Click the like button, turn on the bell, I will keep you updated with the best possible research as possible so that you are as informed as possible. And then I'll walk you through what we've been doing privately inside our investment community. Now, via my public email list, larrychung.substack.com, I've been giving many, many warnings ahead of time. We can see that on August 15th, okay? We can see that on August 15th, when the S&P 500 was essentially north of 4,300, I told our friends here that we need to have a plan to keep your gains by forming a thoughtful strategy. I've been doing everything I can 
to help you survive this market. I've also discussed that people who impatiently chase this rally at the wrong levels without a solid plan in place will indeed fly too close to the sun and subsequently get burned. I even used Greek mythology, Icarus, flying too close to the sun to educate my readers here, okay? And I talked about if there is a melt-up that happens in the market, you must do everything you can to take advantage of it while strategically preparing for the inevitable meltdown that follows. Whenever there is a melt-up, there will eventually be a meltdown. And when there is a meltdown, there will later be a recovery. So you need to position yourself accordingly for that. I even talked about this on Instagram. So make sure to follow me on Instagram, at Larry Chung CFA. Remember, I've got one account, okay? There's a lot of scammers out there who will impersonate my account. DM you directly, talk about business opportunities, talk about crypto. I will not do that. So just make sure that you don't, do not fall for that. I talked about this on a recent post, actually 30 days ago, late July. I said, listen, the market might go higher from here. That was when we were in the midst of that recovery. I said, the bear will return, not right away, but he, capital H, will be back. And here's what we've been talking about inside our investment community. Uh, in my mid-August note, and this report was inside my latest email, so feel free to read that. Like I said, out of goodwill, I've shared this report to everybody who follows me. I said, we've been not, we haven't been buying this counter trend rally. And this was a powerful opportunity for our members inside to reduce equity exposure. So see here, I made it very, very clear. Objectively speaking, I believe this price range is a range to reduce risk, then add risk at the index level. And anybody who's adding risk here is most likely speculating. I go on to discuss my reasoning behind that and I say, well, Apple, okay? I discuss Apple how at 172 per share, how the risk reward there based on their RSI, based on their valuation, not favorable, not favorable. They were selling at 28 times forward earnings and 7.3 times sales when they were trading at around 172, 173 per share, I said, listen, the fundamental upside limited. The downside risk for Apple far outweigh the upside potential. On top of that, there is an entire ecosystem that depends on Apple, AKA semiconductors. And any significant Apple retracement is going to place pressure simultaneously on all three indexes. So I said, I believe the risks of Apple outweigh the rewards. Look, Apple is a fantastic company. And once the price is right for Apple, once the valuation is right for Apple, I will be guiding on when to re-enter this wonderful company. But when it was north of 170 per share, I said, risk reward, not with us. Listen guys, I'm going to stick to what I know. I can't be an expert on everything. I talked about this on Twitter. If a company, is inside my coverage universe. I know what makes that company move. I talked about this on Twitter. If it's not in my coverage universe, my opinion doesn't mean that much. So if you're inside my investment community, if you're following me on YouTube, think about the investment themes I talk about. I talk about semiconductors, I talk about China, I talk about FANG, I talk about internet stocks. If you guys ask me questions about uranium, if you guys ask me about questions like silver, if you guys ask me about questions like solar companies, I'm not an expert in those areas. And my opinion doesn't mean that much in areas that I'm not an expert in. I'm, I'm very knowledgeable in the areas I cover, but in the areas that I don't cover, I cannot provide an opinion. For the things I do talk about though, I make sure that we score. So once again, guys, focus on your competency, Focus on your niche. So ladies and gentlemen, million dollar question. Are we going straight back to the S&P 500 yearly lows 3636? Not right away. Not without another intermittent bounce in between. And we will be catching this inside our community. So when the rhythm is changing, you must be able to spot. I talked about this on Twitter. Remember, right now, every dip is being bought. This was early August when things were good. Everybody was feeling great. I said, but please do not forget the days when every single rally was being faded and those days might come back this fall. So opportunities are coming. Knowing how to spot them and take advantage of them in the safest way possible is something that we plan to do inside our community. And along with actionable, prudent guidance, 
we're also going to deeply focus on investor education as well. I want to make it very clear that until I find bargains and companies where the risk reward is really strongly in our favor, I cannot provide an official opinion on the market until I feel it is safe to do so. So if you join my community, you will notice that the way I communicate is when it's time to strike, I will clearly let you know in a timely manner. But when markets are falling and prices are still finding their equilibrium and I don't believe it's time to do anything, I will literally tell everybody to just hold. There is no need to always take action every single day. And once you realize this, you're going to evolve yourself from a beginner investor to later an intermediate level investor. And then later on in life, you're going to become an advanced investor. Like I said, I, I want to install in you the patience of Buddha, okay? Now you might remember from my tweet that in mid-August, I said, here's the bull and bear camp. We got bears, the Bank of America, Morgan Stanley, BlackRock, City, and Goldman, Bulls, they're JPM, Credit Suisse, Deutsche Bank, Tom Lee from Fundstrat, Jim Cramer, Jeremy Siegel. And this is the funniest comment I've seen in a while. So Eugene, you know, you've got a great sense of humor. He said, seriously, if Kathy Wood, Jim Cramer, and Tom Lee are all bullish, that means we're about to enter the Great Recession. Excuse me, Great Depression. You guys have a great sense of humor. And I hope to see more of this really constructive commentary in my comment section. My comment section is a place of thoughtful discussion. My comment section is a place of thoughtful commentary. So if you've got really interesting things to say, please share it. If I see anything toxic, if I see anything really uh, personally attacking other people in my comment section, those comments are going to be immediately removed. So guys, when volatility truly makes its big return, that will be our time to shine. Follow me on my email list, my Twitter, my Instagram, uh, thank you guys for being awesome. Thank you to Mumu for sponsoring today's video. I will do whatever I can to keep you guys on top of this market. It is a very challenging landscape and I will do what I can. What I ask for in return is your patience. I ask you to stay calm when market volatility reappears. I ask you to take the long view. I ask you to be patient. And if you can do that, I will be able to help you. And with that said, I'll see you in my next video.